Hey everyone, it's Robbie. Um, today I wanted to talk to you guys about cash outs and when they're offered to you, what to do, are they negative EV, positive EV, you know, everything like that. How are they calculated? What do they mean? Um, what a dive into them. I see them. I see it being a popular topic on gambling Twitter nowadays. Um, just as you know, sports books are promoting the 12 leg parlays that are somehow alive going into Sunday and Monday night football. Um, I just wanted to go over it and, you know, kind of help everyone understand my perspective on what to do and how to handle these situations. Um, before I get too far into anything, you know, please like, subs like subscribe and share the channel. Um, you know, all my content, uh, I, I try to get out there for you guys. If there's anything you want to see, please feel free to email me, um, put it in the comments. You know, I, I, I check it fairly frequently. So if there's anything you want to see, please let me know. Um, so getting into this today, at its core, you know, a cash out offer is a sports books offer to a customer to close out an active bet for a fixed amount. Um, that, that's pretty clear. So obviously when you accept the cash out offer, your bet is completed. Um, and that's regardless of whether that bet ends up winning or losing. So if you have that last leg of your parlay going and you hit that cash out button, regardless of if that bet wins or loses, that's what you go home with. Um, so in certain cases it can save you in certain cases, you know, you might leave some money on the table, but you know, you're taking that known outcome in that sense. So like I said, cash outs are most commonly discussed when you have those large parlays going and you put like a 12 leg parlay in or some crazy long shot bet that's still alive going into the last bet or the last leg, um, or, you know, late in that game. So, you know, obviously that's, that's a big decision to make depending on the magnitude of your cash out. Um, and we're going to talk about, you know, kind of a decision tree analysis and, and when to, when to do what and how to go about that, making that decision. Um, in general, too, some sports books do offer like an equal value cash out and mostly FanDuel and DraftKings, like right after you make a bet on most markets, um, basically just in case it was an accident or you change your mind, just like a quick, hey, you know, I didn't mean to wager that $50 on the Eagles. I'm going to take that back. So a lot of sports, some sports books do that. Other sports books like Barstool and FoxBet do take a percentage. Barstool, I think, takes 5% FoxBet. It seems to vary depending on the odds of your wager. I haven't really figured out exactly what their methodology is yet, but they do take a decent chunk. So um, you don't have that luxury on Barstool and FoxBet. I'm not as familiar with the cash outs on other ones, but I do know about those four pretty well. Um, so you can close out the position still for those, the Barstool and FoxBet, but you would do that for a small loss. And then, you know, if you make a bet for, you know, next week's NFL games, you know, we're, we're talking, this is Saturday right here. So we're going to bet something for next Sunday um, and we change our minds Tuesday, you might not get that same value depending on how the line moves. That's usually just a uh, short-term thing. Um, mathematically speaking, cash outs are almost always negative EV. The books don't have an incentive to give you a, a positive value on that, um, meaning you know, a, a better value than you could get than just hedging it. Um, so almost always hedging your position out if you don't want to let that bet ride is going to be your best bet. But it's not always possible for a variety of reasons. Um, so depending on what, what you're betting. So let's say you have like an anytime touchdown parlay, which I know is a pretty common thing for people to do. If you have that last leg going into Sunday night, um, and we have the Colts and 49ers on Sunday night this week. So let's say you have Jonathan Taylor to score. You're not as confident as you were. You have a huge payout. It's not really that easy to hedge that no, not to score a touchdown, right? As opposed to if you took the Colts spread or, you know, the 49ers money line or something like that, right? So it, it's a bit more difficult in certain markets. And that's when a cash out could be more easily explored um, and might be a better value than trying to take a, a high VIG um, no to the no touchdown. Um, so we're going to talk about how these cash out values are calculated. I'm going to keep them pretty easy examples, but, you know, you can apply this to other things um, and your own bets and you know how to navigate them when they're offered to you. So I'm going to give you guys a couple examples of bets that I recently made. So this Broncos-Browns game I have here was for this past Thursday night game. Um, I did place this $50 Broncos money line plus 146 bet right before Baker Mayfield was ruled out. So that line was moving all week. Um, it started at five and a half for the Browns, and gradually as players were ruled out, came down. Obviously, the Browns ended up winning by three. Um, at this point, we know that, but you know, as that line moves, your cash out value might differ. So you're seeing, I'm, I'm being offered a $53, three cent cash out for that $50 bet. So that would be a $3 and three cent profit. Um, basically, you know, given where the line was at right then, um, especially for that dollar amount, 
if I wanted to close out that position and, and I didn't need the funds immediately, um, I could, based on this math right here, I could cash out or I could hedge out for a locked in $4.42 or 43 cent win. Um, basically the way you figure that out, you try to get to that same payout. So it's the same logic as Arvin middling, all of that stuff. Um, you know, a $68 and 58 cent wager on the Browns money line, which when I did this, um, the Browns were going off at minus 126. So basically that gets you to the same, the $68, 58 cent wager gets you to the same $123 payout, um, cent difference, but that's, you know, close enough for these purposes. So that would lock that in. So you compare the $4 and 42 cent win to the $3 and three cent win. And obviously we'd rather the $4, 42 cent. I know that's a small scale, but you know, just to easily explain how this is calculated. So FanDuel in this case is taking a percentage off um, because they're not going to give you that equal value, right? Um, that cash out, you know, you, maybe you need the funds immediately. You want to put it in something else. Um, it's not worth the extra dollar and 40 cents that you'd get by hedging it. So you just take it. Obviously that's, you know, not a lot, but over time it could add up. Um, so the second example I have here, I have the Bron I, re I really like the Broncos this week, clearly. Um, I thought the line was going to move, which is why I did like them so much. Um, ultimately it ended up winning, of course, but uh, so the second one, we had the Broncos and the Bulls money line. So the Bulls opener against the Pistons, um, minus 174, that line moved as well. And the Broncos plus 146. So after the Bulls had won, we know that the Broncos is the only leg left. So basically we have the Broncos money line at plus 287, which, you know, you're not going to find anywhere. Obviously that's the parlay, um, parlay odds that we're talking about. Um, so to figure out what the hedge would be, you know, the same practice, you want to get to that same payout. So calculate that you need a $64.79 wager to win enough to get you to the $116.21 payout. Now I'm doing this to the cent just to be like perfectly tied out. Obviously, if you're doing this stuff, you know, you want to calculate the cash out, sure. But in, in terms of in practice and you want to perfectly hedge it out, like, you know, you don't need to go to the cent like that all the time. Um, but similarly, we can see that with the locked in profit, if I wanted to close out of my Broncos position here, um, I would be able to lock in a $21.42 win in either case with that $64.79 wager on the Browns money line. So as you see in the cash out offer, I'm only being offered $47.19, which is a $17.19 win or net profit over my wager. Um, so FanDuel, again, has taken a decent percentage, but it's, it's the immediate need of it, right? If I needed the $47 right now and I wanted to put it on something else, I could cash it and say, you know what, I have a better opportunity than trying to hedge for the remaining $4. Um, so that's a consideration, but that's generally speaking how these cash outs are calculated. Um, I think it's important to keep in mind, especially from like a positive negative EV perspective. So hedging, you're always going to be able to get more profit out of it, right? You're going to be able to lock in more, especially on large bets. It's going to make more of a difference in terms of, you know, the actual dollars that you see. Um, but again, there, there's certainly benefits to the cash out method as well. And, you know, it depends, depends on your situation. So in this next slide, we're going to see uh, my thoughts on when to accept the cash out offer. Um, so again, mathematically, as we just saw the cash out, you do lose a little bit compared to hedging, um, but it doesn't mean profitable betters don't ever take them. So again, like I said, if you need the funds, if you want to put it into something else, you see a good opportunity, another bet you like, arving, middling, anything like that. Um, you can definitely take that and put it in something else, right? If, that, if that's going to be a better bet for you than having those extra $4 to be able to lock something bigger in, it's definitely worth it. Um, obviously, that's very contextual and something that's difficult to walk through, but you know, just thinking abstractly about it, right? That's something where it would make sense. Um, and there's obviously always people that you, know, you see on Twitter in the comments of like, you know, FanDuel and DraftKings when they post like, oh my God, this person has this like 10,000 cash out offer. And everyone in the comments is saying, well, you shouldn't have put it in your parlay if you're just going to cash it out. Well, obviously, you know, in an ideal world, sure. But when we're putting out those like five, ten dollar to win 20 grand, 30 grand parlays that you see out there, and it's somehow still alive when you get to Sunday and Monday night football, you're not necessarily expecting that's just a fun bet that people are just putting out there for entertainment purposes, like, oh, let's see if I can hit this. Um, if you're expecting to win a 12 leg parlay, that's not like crazy juice. I mean, that's insane. So it, it, you're not expecting to win that bet is basically what I'm saying. So it's not a normal situation and you're going to see a huge cash out offer. I mean, it's a lot of, a lot of factors at play that could limit you from hedging. 
um, whether you can actually put that amount down on a sports book. Um, if you're limited, you might not be able to. Um, you might not have access to the funds. So we're going to walk through a little decision tree um, really quickly. So basically, we're going to assume here that there's no way you're going to let this ride. It doesn't matter what, what the bet would be, um, how much you'd have to put out. You want to close out this position. So first off, is there a market that allows me to perfectly hedge this bet? So like I said, with Jonathan Taylor, as that example, if any time touchdown parlay, if you can get a bet down on him to not score, then you can perfectly hedge out of that, right? Because there's only two outcomes. He either scores or he doesn't. It's not like, a, well, he has to score, but in the first half, something like that. If it's a more niche market, it might be harder to cash out or um, hedge out of it. So a cash out might make more sense. If you don't have a perfect hedge available and you want to close out, your method is cashing out, even if that means taking a slight hit on an EV, right? Um, if it's a big payout, it's still a big payout. It's a lot of profit at the end of the day. Um, so let's assume that you can perfectly hedge it, right? Let's say you have the 49ers money line and the Sunday night game tomorrow night. Um, do I have the requisite funds to appropriately hedge this? Do I have, let's say $10,000 to put down on the Colts? A, can I deposit that and put it in before this game happens? B, will a sports book let me bet that? C, like, am I comfortable doing that? So if any of those questions are answered, no. You can just cash it out. Again, you're going to take a little bit of a hit, right? But in terms of what your profits would be, but in terms of peace of mind, you're going home with a $10,000 win, whatever. That's awesome. Um, and, you know, a lot of people say they cash out and then they throw a couple grand or, you know, a certain percentage back on the team that they had, had bet to, you know, let it ride a little bit still. Um, you know, you, you, you could end up leaving money on the table in these, in these situations, but um, in terms of your comfort and what you can practically do, you know, there, there's vastly different things that could happen, right? Um, you might not be able to do one of those things, you might not have $10,000 easily accessible to be able to load into a DraftKings FanDuel, whatever, and make that bet within two hours. Um, like if you had, you know, your four o'clock games hit, whatever, it might not make sense to do that. Um, and obviously the last thing is, do I have enough time to place this bet? So if your last leg settled at 7.30 and this Sunday night game starts at 8.15 and you have to figure out all of this stuff in terms of what to bet on where, if you have to spread it across multiple books, depositing all of that stuff and working through any potential limits, you know, it might just be worth cashing out. Um, if, you know, you're talking about the Monday night game or the Thursday night game or something unrelated that doesn't happen for a little bit of time, or you know, maybe a, a different story. But if, if it's the time sensitive thing, you know, don't stress yourself out. You can just take the cash out and go home happy, right? Um, now, if the answer to all these questions that I just went through is yes, hedge it because you will make more money doing it. But of course, you know, that comes with having a lot of money tied up all at once. Um, it does limit your opportunities. I've talked about in other videos where, you know, you're, you have an opportunity cost every time you make a bet, right? So if you throw down 10,000 on, you, you throw down everything else you have, you throw 10,000 on the Colts and that's your perfect, you know, perfect hedge position, whatever, any opportunities that come up during that time before those bets settle, you might not be able to take advantage of. So that's another consideration as well. Again, abstract thinking, but, you know, something to certainly consider um, depending on your bankroll and, you know, what's reasonable for you as an individual. Um, and, you know, lastly, you know, throw an odd jam into this. If you're going to hedge it, make sure you shop for that best line. You know, that makes such a difference. Obviously, when I showed you the FanDuel cash outs on the, uh, on the other sheet, um, that's based on FanDuel's lines. So if, let's say, you know, I, I had the Browns at minus 126 there. If the Browns were minus 115 on, let's say, DraftKings, take it on DraftKings and you're going to make more. So same thing. Like, you want to make sure, again, using the same um, scenario with having the 49ers money line in a big parlay and trying to hedge with the Colts, you want to make sure you get the best Colts money line value out there, right? So if, I don't care what site you have them on. If you have, you know, if you can get plus 200 on DraftKings, but your parlays on FanDuel where the Colts are plus 190, it's more bang for your buck getting the plus 200. So especially if you have to deposit funds and, and go through all of that, or you have the requisite funds already available, you know, make sure you're doing it where you get the best value. Um, and that said, throwing in a plug as well. Middles are always fun in that situation. Be, the, the thrill of being able to win both bets, especially if you have a pretty reasonable range of outcomes. Um, I think the Colts are going at like plus four and a half right now, having 49ers money line with Colts plus four and a half, you know, 49ers by a field goal or four points is very reasonable. Um, even by one or two less common, but 
you know, those key numbers, that can be a lot of fun. And that would be an insane win for you. Um, and just at the small price of, you know, maybe not having as big of a win, you'd still be able to lock in a pretty big win, though, if you had that big parlay going. Um, and, you know, lastly, just to close out, if you have a life-changing amount, if, if 10K is life-changing to you or you're getting offered 100K, that's life whatever the number is, doesn't matter. doesn't matter what's life-changing to me, it matters what life what's life-changing to you. So if that's being offered to you, take it. Like, don't feel any shame. Don't feel any shame in going to Twitter and saying, you know, I cashed this out, whatever. All the trolls, they're just jealous that they can't make that bet themselves, right? So if you have that being offered to you, there's absolutely no shame in taking it. That's probably going to be, you know, a bet that you're going to remember and talk about um, in your betting communities. So if there's something like changing being offered, I can't reiterate enough, but make sure you take that. So I'm going to leave it there for today, guys. If you have any questions, um, want any other feedback, want to see anything else, you know, please let me know, um, comment, like I said, email, anything like that. Um, thanks again for your support guys. Appreciate it.